Hey, this is Five of Clubs, and welcome to another episode of Simpleton Solos, a series in which a simpleton plays one of his favorite board games. Today I'll be running through Tiny Epic Defenders, a fantasy cooperative game that tasks a team of two to four intrepid adventurers with defending a kingdom from hostile invading forces. As the title of the game suggests, the experience is both tiny and epic. There are quite a few Tiny Epic titles on the market today, thanks to the production efforts of Gamelin Games. They've got Tiny Epic Tactics, Tiny Epic Quests, Tiny Epic Galaxies, Tiny Epic Western, Tiny Epic Mechs, Tiny Epic Pirates, Tiny Epic Zombies, Blueberry, Raspberry, Ginseng, Sleepy Time, Green Tea, Green Tea with Lemon, Green Tea with Lemon and Honey, Liver Disaster, Ginger with Honey, Ginger without Honey, Vanilla Almond, White Truffle, Blueberry Chamomile, Vanilla Walnut, Constant Comment, and Earl Grey. Did you make some of those up? And the recently kickstarted Tiny Epic Dungeons, and still more that I missed mentioning here. Each of these games takes the core elements of these various genres and compresses them into travel-friendly packages, allowing for quick, casual gameplay with minimal setup and cleanup. Here's how it works. At the start of the game, each player chooses one hero character card that outlines their hero's traits during the game. Each hero character card also lists the hero's health points on the left side of the card, as well as any special abilities the hero has. For instance, this hero here has 5 health points and the Martyr ability listed in the bottom right side of the hero character card. Be sure to take note of your hero's special abilities, it could come in handy throughout the game. Then place the capital location card in the center of the table, with all hero figures participating in the game on top of it. On the right side of the location card, you will see a series of numbers that ascend up the right side of the card. You could sort of envision this to be that location's health points, wherein Chaos dealt to the capital by Invader cards increases this track. If the track is ever increased to its highest slot, the game is over and the heroes lose. Next, place the six remaining location cards in a ring around the Kingdom card, like so. Notice that each other location card has two sides, each hosting a different special ability, and it is recommended that players randomize the side and spot for each location card to provide variability in the game setup. After setting the locations out, you will build the turn order deck, which is comprised of one hero turn card matching the color of your character's figure for each player, as well as a few horde cards that represent the factions attempting to invade your regions. Whenever a hero card is turned over from the turn deck, that hero may spend action points to perform the actions listed on the hero character card. These actions will allow the hero to move between locations, use location-based abilities, reduce chaos in the outer regions, and defend locations from horde cards. Whenever a horde card is revealed from the turn order deck, players will increase the specified location's chaos track up one position. Like the capital card, if a location's chaos track reaches the topmost slot, that location is lost and any horde cards invading from that location head straight for the kingdom. For instance, if the planes have been overrun and a horde card would deal chaos to the planes, that chaos would be dealt to the capital location instead. But all is not yet lost, as the heroes are able to repel the invading forces using the defend action, hence the game's namesake. If a hero is in a location targeted by a revealed horde card, that hero may suffer one damage to defend that location from the horde and spare it from receiving any chaos penalties. Very heroic. However, hero's health is a finite resource, meaning heroes will have to hop back to the capital for some healing here and there, which unfortunately pulls them away from the front lines. Such is the art of balance in Tiny Epic Defenders. Additionally, as the game progresses, more Horde cards will be added to the turn order deck, some of which will be mini-boss-style dire Horde enemies. These tougher threats can still be defended against, but they will deal the defending hero two points of damage instead of the usual one, and often garner some other imposition through their special ability. Truly foul forces indeed. However, if a hero defends against a dire horde enemy, they also get to draw one card from the special artifacts deck that is shuffled at the start of the game. Artifacts offer new skills and abilities to the heroes, helping them to keep up with the rising tide of horde foes in the turn order deck, and ultimately the final epic boss that comes out at the end of the game. When the epic foe enters play, the heroes become tiny epic attackers who must defeat the big baddie to win the game. So, in simpleton summary, the heroes aim to defend the kingdom long enough to draw out the epic foe and defeat it. The enemy cards, or the horde cards, will attempt to deal chaos damage to locations, hoping to reduce them to zero and bring the kingdom crumbling down thereafter. So let's dive into the game and see it all in motion. 
Alrighty friends, we are ready to begin our Tiny Epic Adventure in Tiny Epic Defenders. The board is set, the pieces are in play, and let's go ahead and review what we have on the board here. Today we will be playing as Nira, the Dark Elf Ranger who has the Far Shot ability you may secure from an adjacent outer regions. So normally when you use the secure action, which is the action, whoops, which is the action allowing you to reduce the chaos in an area, you have to be in that particular outer region or, uh, well, yeah, outer region to uh, make that happen. But Nira, being super special, if she is in a region adjacent to one that she would like to secure, she may secure from an adjacent region. Very cool. And we also have Randall the Halfling Bard. He looks like he's in a chipper spirits, knocking over cups of mead and playing... Uh, something akin to a violin, but I, I question his uh, stance of holding that bow if that's what a violin uh, is meant to be. And he has the Befriend ability. On your turn, you may use abilities of adjacent outer regions and defenders in the same region as you. But you must still pay their action cost if applicable. So, the wording there is a little fuzzy, but what I think that means is that um, this yellow cat he's yellow in this case, what he's able to do is, if he is on one of these regions, he also looks to adjacent regions, and so he can use this Entomb ability over here, despite being in the plains, or the Mountains abilities, despite being in the plains. Uh, and then if he is sharing a space with Nira, he can utilize Nira's Far Shot ability. I think that's what that means, because the wording as far as use abilities of adjacent outer regions and defenders in the same region as you, I'm pretty sure that's what that means. Okay. All right, and let's, uh, speaking of these outer regions, let's look at the offered skills that they give us. This one has a passive skill called Safeguard. You may defend the two adjacent outer regions as if you were on them. Uh, much like securing regions, defending also generally requires you to be in the region that's being attacked uh, in order to defend it. But if you're in the plains, you can defend for the mountains and for the ruins, for example. Very neat. This is uh, an action that allows you to meditate, spending one action point. Uh, place your defender in this circle here. When the mountains are attacked, move out of the circle to defend without losing any health. Very cool. So essentially, normally, like I covered in the intro, when you defend, uh, instead of a region increasing in chaos, your character decreases in their health. Essentially, they've expended their energy uh, fighting off the forces that were trying to get in. Uh, but in the mountains here, if you were in a meditative circle, then you're able to defend without losing any health points. Very neat. We have the coast here. You could spend one action point to dispatch. Move any defender to any region. So, for instance, if Nira was over here and our friend Randall was here, Nira could spend one action point to teleport our friend Randall anywhere else on the board. Very cool. Uh, definitely good to get people in the spots that you need them outside of their direct turn, so to speak. All right, we have the forest. You can spend two action points to harmonize. If the forest is at chaos level zero, you may secure one chaos in the capital. So if this was at one, you could spend that action while being on that region to bring it to zero. Uh, all the outer regions allow you to secure by spending actions to reduce the chaos, but... The capital city does not work the same way. You cannot be in the capital city and then spend action points to reduce the chaos. There are very, very few ways of reducing chaos once it's built up in the capital, and the forest ability here is one such means of doing so. All right, the desert here has the mirage ability. While in the desert, lose one health to reveal the top three cards of the turn order deck, and then rearrange them in any order, place them back on top once per turn. Indeed. So essentially you'd be able to see what's coming up next and that might help contextualize what you want to do with your actions. Very neat. And you'll notice this actually does not cost any uh, action points to use. It actually just costs you the health because it's a, a passive ability. Uh, and of course you have to be there to use it. All right. And then the last place, the ruins, has an entomb ability. And you can see there's an entomb slot here. Place any one card from the discard pile into this card slot. At the start of the next round, place the Entombed card directly into the discard pile. So essentially, if there's a card that comes out of here that is like, oh, yikes, I don't want to see that one in the next round, uh, you can just lock it away. You can put it in the Entombed slot, and then when this deck reshuffles for the next round, you put it straight in the discard without activating it. Uh, very, very helpful, potentially. All right, let's go ahead and begin. We'll start by drawing cards from the turn order deck, and this will dictate the order of play. So... Oh, so the first thing that's getting hit is the ruins. So we'll hit that right there. And the second getting hit is the coast. You can see those symbols here 
in the corner correlate to these areas on the board. All right, the coast is getting hit again, as is the desert. There we go. The desert is also getting hit again, and the mountains are being hit a little bit as well. Okay, so good. So uh, there are three enemy cards at the start of the game. The rest of the stuff belongs to the players, and it's t kind of a good idea to sort of take stock of what the starting cards do, because those are just going to reshuffle in. They're always going to be there. So we at least know that this is going to be the consistent state of the board, and then it's going to get worse as more cards get added to the deck. So it looks like they're going for the coast pretty hard and the desert pretty hard. So we might want to prioritize those two particular locations when deciding our actions. Okay. And speaking of actions, it's time for all of our defenders to begin to spend action points. With an all defenders card, you see here that's for a two-player game specifically. Uh, all defenders gain three action points to spend collectively or four action points if there are any destroyed regions. There are currently no destroyed regions yet, so we do not get that extra action point. But uh, we do get the three, so let's take a look at what we might want to do. Hmm. I think what we'll do for the three action points, you can technically split them up. When these all defenders card, you can split them up between the number of players any way you want. But what I'm going to do is send Nira right to the forest, and then she's going to use her far shot ability to secure remote regions. I think we're going to go one, two, three. There we go. So three action points using that far shot benefit there, and let's continue on. Ah, more of the all defenders actions. Let's go ahead and use one more action to use a far shot secure ability. Very good. And for our dear friend over here, let's get him out of the capitol building two and three let's go over to the ruins because we may want to entomb something before the round is over all right the red player nira gets to go nira is going to go one two and three nira is going to meditate so she is uh finding her inner self and waiting for another threat to try its hand at taking the mountains in which she will repel them with force Indeed. And the yellow player gets to go. We are going to reduce the threat here by one. Let us entomb a card. We know that the coast and the desert are the ones most hit. So let's take a look here. Here's a card that actually is the coast and the desert. So let's actually entomb that card. We don't want that troubling us. Let's lock those away. Additionally, um, this card uh, showcases some rather threatening looking scorpions. For those of you who watched my Power Rangers episode, the, the video game, not the... Um, not the board game, uh, you heard uh, some small measure of my terrible fear of scorpions. So uh, it does me well to lock them away and have to not worry about them coming out here. So that uh, has a sense of catharsis to it, I'll admit. All right, so this deck was empty. So what you do is you flip it over, add a card, shuffle, shuffle, and the entombed card goes straight to the discard without being activated. Excellent. Let's see who's next. Now, I will say, at the start of the game, it was the first three enemy cards, and then it was all player turn cards. Now that everything's shuffled, we don't know when is coming out when. Uh, what is coming out when, I suppose, is a better way to put that. So, it could be players going, it could be monsters going, it'll be a mix, and it'll be a mix going forward. Alright, so the ruins are potentially going to get one chaos, but I think I will actually have Randall defend, losing one health to prevent the increase of chaos here. Uh, using uh, the game's namesake there, indeed. And uh, we have one that is going to the coast. All right, moving right along. We have an All Defenders card. Very cool. You know what? Let's lock away those scorpions again. Get out of here, scorpions, as action number one. Action number two. Let's go here. And for action number three, I don't believe that while someone is meditating, they're able to reduce the, um, able to use any other actions. I think once you're in that meditation spot, you're focused on your inner self and you're not able to use those other actions. So I will expect that uh, our friend Nira cannot use a secure action here or here using far shot. So I think that's what we'll do. We'll call it good right there. Actually, you know what we'll do? We'll go back in here for our third because why waste the potential heal? 
All right, moving right. Uh, you know what? It's kind of too early for that, isn't it? What? But we just finished. Tying them down. Can't get Let's actually stay right there. Okay, sorry about the flip flop. Ah, maybe I should have gone in there. <laughs> okay, such is the way it goes sometimes. All right, so it is the yellow player's turn. We have three actions. I'm going to go a one, a two, and a three. How about that? All right, moving along. All defenders. Okay, we've seen a lot of player cards uh, at the start of things. Not so good. I'm just going to go one, two, three, because our friend Nira is still... Uh, entranced in a, a stasis state he's in a trance well get him out of it you and your husband are up now so yes we have one uh threat chaos going to the forest we have one chaos going to the desert okay and those darn scorp oh more scorpions Ugh. yep patooey all right but the mountains are getting attacked however nira has been preparing spiritually for this experience for some time and she was ready to repel those fierce looking polar bears and it is the red player's turn again hmm it's tempting to relock nira into that defensive spot there's not a whole lot else she can do first is there that's super helpful anyway All right, Nira, you're going in. Fine, fine. I've convinced myself. Okay, adding a new card. Shuffle, shuffle, and those scorpions are freed from their tomb. However, I'm thinking of maybe putting them back in there, depending on what we see here. All right, we have the ruins getting hit. And we have the coast getting hit, but I'm going to defend, because this is tiny epic defenders after all. Yellow defenders turn. I'm at two health points right now. I may want to consider getting ready to go back to the capital, but not just yet. I'm going to use the dispatch ability to move any defender to any region. So I'll teleport straight to the desert for one action. And then for the other two actions, I will go two, three. And then before I end my turn, I will spend one health to utilize this mirage ability to look at the top three cards of the turn order deck and rearrange them however I please. Well, okay. I guess we know what's coming next, don't we? <laughs> <laughs> uh oh boy okay i think probably what we'll do is maybe we'll yeah that's what we'll do so we'll have red go last then the bad guys then all defenders right no sorry i got those backwards let's do the bad guys first and then all defenders and then the red that's what i meant haha -ha! yes so the red is going to go the red is increasing the threat in the ruins and the planes incidentally all right, and we have all defenders' actions that we can utilize here. Uh, there's three points to spend between the set of us. She is, however, back to her humming and uh, meditation. So we will leave her to that in case a threat attacks the mountains. But I guess for our yellow, we really want to get yellow back to the capital city anyway. So what we will do is go one, two on our way back, and three. So now yellow is in the capital city, ready for the start of yellow's turn to heal up to maximum health. Very good. Unfortunately, it's red's turn right now, and red is currently meditating and finding her spiritual self, so she will not be able to assist us. All right, moving along. We have threats in the desert and the forest. Good thing we just knocked the threat down there. We have more threats gunning for the desert, and... We have been, uh, Nira has been awoken from her meditation to defend against those polar bears once more. And another all defenders card, indeed. I suppose what I'll do is I'll go down here. One, two, three. And then Nira can actually defend all three of these. She defends this half of the board by herself, which is pretty cool. Yeah, okay, that's what I'll do. All right, now let's add a new card. We did not entomb those scorpions, so we are going to see them, unfortunately. Uh, but what else do we think we're going to see? Let's find out. All defenders again. Okay, well, first order of business. Let's reduce the threat there. Now nah, let's not. You know what? We're going to leave the planes. The planes are fine. We're going to go one, two, three, because we know that the monsters love the desert, so we need to get that place spick and span before they arrive. Okay. 
Uh, the ruins are being attacked, but I am going to have Nira defend those ruins, and the planes will go up in one threat. The chaos in the coast will increase, and the desert likewise. Those scorpion. Oh, that was the card we've been entombing, I'll bet. All right, the desert getting more threat again. Good thing we came down here and went for the desert after all. And the forest as well. Yellow! Okay, so it's the start of our turn. We are in the capital city. So let us heal to full. And it looks like we have a number of priorities here. I say we go one, two, mm, yeah, three. Actually, you know what we'll do? We'll have taken one threat off of there, and then I'll just be here to defend it if needed. How about that? <gasps> a manticore! Okay, so we now have our first dire enemy, you can see. Now, unlike these other cards here that have two regions that they attack, the dire enemies only attack one region, which is indicated here. Uh, however, to defend against them, instead of losing one heart, you lose two hearts. But if you don't defend against them, they activate their special ability. This one, for example, would increase the chaos in the region by two instead of one. If it increased two, we would lose the desert. So I'm going to defend against that monster. Good thing we healed in time. And not it's not all bad, because if you defend against a dire threat, you also get a card from the artifact deck. Let's see what we got. The Elixir of Errant. When you sacrifice one health, gain two action points instead of one. Okay, so yeah, I should explain that. Um, in this game, there actually is one additional action that you can do whenever it's your turn. That is, when your defender card is drawn, not the all defender cards. You can sacrifice one health point, basically lose one health point, to gain one additional action point. So if you just needed to get that one more action done uh, before your turn was over, then you are able to do that in exchange for health. However, with the Elixir of Errand, if we ever sacrifice health, we get to use two action points instead of one, which uh, is just double the fun there. So very good. All right, Manticore, we have defended, which means there's no chaos increase here. But now we're going to have to remember going forward that a Manticore will be gunning for the desert on top of everything else that's apparently gunning for the desert. Uh, like these scorpions, for example. Uh, man, it would be really unfortunate to send him right back to the capital city, wouldn't it? You know what, let's let the threat go up by one because we technically don't lose this place until it gets to that spot. And the mountains, those lovely mountains. Those polar bears are probably perplexed, like, wait, where's that meditating lady to come and, and shoo us away? Where'd she go? All right, we have an all defenders card, indeed. Hmm. So many choices. I suppose, certainly, we are going to reduce this by two, at the very least, and then maybe using uh, the far shot ability from our friend Nira, we will reduce the planes by one also. Excellent. So we reduce some threat with our all defenders card. Very good. All right. It is the red defender's turn. We could entomb something. Maybe uh, those scorpions, for example. We already have a manticore going for the desert. There's three cards going for that desert, man. Yeah. All right. Scorpions, you're going back in the boo-boo box. Yep. There you go. But, oh yeah. And I just must say... That scene from Hook for being a PG film was horrifying uh, to me as a child. I could not imagine a worse fate than being shut in a claustrophobic space and having poisonous scorpions dropped on top of me while I scream in terror. What a horrible scene. I don't know who is the sadist who came up with that for a, a lighthearted film about Peter Pan and Captain Hook, but my goodness, so sick. All right, anyway, so we have spent one action point. Sorry, I just had a little uh, moment there. Uh, and we still have two action points remaining. Let's go ahead and move up to the planes, and let's go ahead and reduce the threat in the planes. You know what? Actually, let's reduce the threat in the mountains using Far Shot, because we have it. We might as well. Alrighty. And then the threat in the ruins. Whoops. That is the ruins itself. The threat in the ruins is going up, and the coast is getting a bit more tense. Okay. Excellent. Going right in the discard pile as per protocol, and we are ready to begin the next round. All defenders. Hmm. I think I'm going to leave Randall there because I want him to defend against that Manticore again and get another item. Now, 
you might be wondering, well, wait, that's going to put you down two and put you to zero. Does that mean you're dead? Actually not. That just means that you are not able to use secure, defend, or fight actions, meaning that basically you can only use your points to move. So you'd have to get to the capital and then, you know, heal when it's your turn again. So I'm thinking we're going to need at least one or two more artifacts to even have a chance at beating the epic foe. So we're going to have to be a little bold, shall we say. Excuse me. Alrighty, so knowing that, let's leave him there, and what I think I will do instead is move here, reduce that by one, and go back to meditating. Those polar bears might have a sense of comfort now, but uh, not for long. Alright, the ruins are going up by one, as is the coast. The yellow defender's turn. Darn, I was hoping not to see it just yet. Okay. I think what I'm going to do is go one, two, three. To be back in the desert, ready for that manticore to show up. All defenders turned. Oh boy, again with this. I guess... You know what? That's silly. I'm just going to... Oh, but she can't do anything else. One, two, three. And then we go out and back in. And then one more time, out and back in. Yawn. Okay. All right. Uh, oh, uh, it's the harpy, actually, which is going to target the mountains. Ah, excellent. This is perfect. So the thing is, we just put our friend into meditation, which means that she is able to defend without losing health. That includes dire enemies that you must defend against so not only are we not taking any damage but we are getting a lovely piece of loot for our trouble <gasps> the spear of valor yes okay i will make no qualms about it i think this is the most essential piece of gear in the game for actually beating the bosses so i am very pleased that we got it this early i was honestly thinking we would have to churn through this deck because there's 10 shuffled cards in here so you never know when you're going to find these different items and I'll also say this, I certainly believe that there are some items in here that are way better than others, and I'll maybe talk a little bit more about that near the end of the game, but let us equip the Spear of Valor. Funny that our uh, Dark Elf Ranger, who seems to have a bow, is now going to be fighting with a spear. Oh, you know what, though? That bow is massive. Maybe she could even shoot the Spear of Valor out of that bow, huh? That would be pretty cool. All right. Very good. Excellently done. And we spared ourselves this Frenzy ability, which all outer regions at level 0 chaos must increase to level 1. So if we were doing a really great job of defending all these places, all the ones at 0 would immediately go to 1 if left undefended. No good. All right. The ruins going up and the plains going up. The mountains are here. I'm going to actually have to defend it for real if I want to defend. And the desert... Uh, I will not defend because I want to have enough to be able to defend the Manticore, enough of these uh, health. So I'm actually just going to let this go up by one. All right, Manticore. There you are. There he is. I knew he was coming eventually. All right, we are now at zero, meaning we can no longer defend or fight or secure. But we have defended, meaning we get an artifact. What do we get? The Zodiac Cloak, which uh, as this uh, icon here indicates is actually like a piece of armament is a, a clothing which is different uh for comparison these items with the fist you can only hold two of these because you have two hands and uh you can wear one piece of clothing the zodiac cloak when an allied defender card is drawn including all defender including the all defenders card you may sacrifice one health to immediately gain one action point oh wow that's interesting so and that's really interesting because we have the elixir of errand I've actually never gotten these together, but now that I'm looking at that, so like we could do a sacrifice and then we'd get to gain that benefit instead of the one. Yeah, look at that. That's cool. Okay. Not that we're in any position to do that right now because we have no health to sacrifice, but uh, it is cool to know going forward. Okay. Wow. All right. Uh, the desert is going to be hit yet again. Oof. And uh, the forest is getting hit. And we can we are powerless to defend it, even if we wanted to. And the red player gets to go. That's three actions for the red. Maybe, 
We know that the harpy is going to be targeting the mountain. So what I think I'm going to do is go one, two, and three. Haha, -ha, yes. Because when we defend those mountains, it will not cost us any of our health. All right. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Okay, good. Good, good, good. Moving right along is the final card. So meaning the next time we would have to draw a card from on top of this deck. As it says, prepare yourself for the epic foe, which is the final boss. Uh, instead of adding a new card to this deck, we would instead reveal the final boss and the end game would begin. All right, uh, let's go, go, go. All defenders card. Well, certainly we are going to need to get our friend here back to the capital city before the end of this, which that's going to take us two points to do. And I'm really kind of worried about the desert, but maybe we've had our fun there. Yeah, maybe we've gotten what we can from the desert, so maybe we'll leave it alone and let it fall. Okay, the red defender's turn. Unfortunately, the painful thing is the red defender is actually in a meditative spot. So while she's meditating, I don't believe that she can do these remote secures, but maybe we'll come out of it because I think that coming out of meditate is a free action. We'll go one, two, and then resume our meditation. It's like... She was meditating, she's like, oh, i got to do the chores. She goes, <laughs> does the chores, goes back to meditating. Very good. All right, and we have the desert being hit. Oh, boy, there it is. So the desert is now lost, meaning that we increase the chaos in the capital city. And now a number of things happen when a place is lost. One, the card that caused it to happen is placed on the region card, sort of indicating that it's a lost region but additionally this card is no longer a part of this deck uh, so the less scorpions that we see frankly the better in my opinion um, but now every time one of those desert cards of which there are many uh, every time that one of them comes out here it's going to deal its damage straight to the capital unless someone is here to defend it which includes that terrible manticore who deals two uh chaos instead of one if left undefended so we are not going to be able to forget about that manticore all right yikes oh but the good news is because uh now remember earlier i said that the order that these things activate is actually important because when a card is assigned here for having fulfilled the first condition that means that this condition is not applied so actually this mountains does not get attacked meaning that i can stay in my meditative circle here until such a time as the harpy comes out hopefully all right. Oh, darn. There we go. Look at that. We got yet another of these, but first uh, we have the coast. So, and then uh, because that place has fallen, it's going to go straight to the capital. Oh, dear. And, oh, another one going straight for the capital. They are ruthless. All right. There we go. And it's the yellow defender's turn. Oh, a breath of fresh air. We have some health again, which means that we are able to utilize actions. Hmm. I think it would be irresponsible to abandon the desert because that manticore is going to shoot it up too every time it comes out. Oh my goodness. I guess what I'll do is go one, two. Oh, oh, and the other thing. I'm sorry. There's one other thing that happens when a region falls. We now have access to four actions per turn instead of three. So instead of me counting in terms of three, I should be counting in terms of four. So one. We move that down two, we'll move it down three, and then we'll end our turn in the desert, ready to face down that terrible manticore. All right. There's the harpy. Excellent. And we were prepared. We were meditating, and we shooed that uh, nasty harpy away, indeed, and do not have to take damage for it. What did we get? We got the shield of Agmor. Ag Agmor. I'm not sure how to pronounce that. Uh, it is another item here with the fist icon, meaning we're at our limit here. When defending against a dire enemy, lose one fewer heart. Interesting. So now, even if... I mean, she's been meditating and ignoring all damage from dire enemies so far. But even if she didn't, now if she had to block one on true grit, she would uh, only lose one health point instead of the usual two. Very excellent. Okay, moving right along. We have the ruins getting up and the coast getting up there that manticore is back but we are in position let us take our damage so if only uh randall had that shield he would be uh, quite stalwart in uh, blocking that but unfortunately he does not 
But we did defend it, meaning we get yet another artifact. We got the Hammer of Might, our second item with the fist. And the, <laughs> it's funny, I would not have expected Randall the Halfling Bard to end up with this massive mallet of might. I'm sorry, Hammer of Might. I don't, maybe I'm thinking, you know, a huge war hammer. And it's really just a, like a, a workman's tool. But uh, anyway, Hammer of Might, immediately reduce one chaos in the outer region where you end your turn. Oh, that's super cool. So essentially, it's like a free secure action. Uh, just it, it triggers at the end of wherever you decide to end your turn. Wow. Okay. Very cool. I have some ideas for what to do with that. All right. Moving right along. We have the mountains. The mountains are getting attacked. And we're just going to go ahead and block it because we're going to have to send this person back to the capital city anyway. And the ruins are getting attacked as well. The ruin. Oh no! The ruins are lost as well! <gasps> oh boy, that's not good. So we have two areas that are lost. That's really unfortunate because I was planning to do some trickery with the, uh, with the entomb there. Darn. Okay. Well, uh, the good news is we do get to spare ourselves from activating that planes part because this card went straight there. Alright, and we end with an all defenders action. Okay. Hmm. Well. We have four action points. And I could, for instance, I actually could take one damage to get two action points in the middle of this, making it six action points that we can spend between all of us. And you know what? I'm going to do that because I need Randall to go here to get healed, unfortunately. And so we still have, because those two were granted us by the Elixir of Erend, we still have our four action points. So I think what we're going to do... So we're going to go one, two, uh, two, three, four. I really hate that both of our guys ended up in here at the same time. Uh, I have made a miscalculation or two, I think, in doing so. Normally, the way that you want this to work out is sort of like, I'm trying to remember that movie, but there was a movie where uh, I think they were like Navy swimmers or something that were training. There was one scene where they were pushing these heavy bricks underwater, and essentially what they did was they... You know, one guy, a swimmer, would go up to get breath, and he'd come down, and then they'd swim, and the other guy would go. They sort of staggered when they left to get, uh, get air, and that's sort of what you want to do as far as healing in the capital city as well. Uh, but unfortunately, it did not work out that way for us this time. Okay, but it's now time to reveal the epic foe, and it looks like we have... Who is this guy? Oh, we have the hill giant. Indeed, the hill giant epic foe with ten beastly points of health my goodness uh, he has the towering trait and as you can see he has one of these terrain symbols he starts in the plains and his towering trait means the defender must spend one action point to climb onto the hill giant on this card before they can use the fight action if defenders jump off as a free action or get knocked off they lose one point of health and land in the hill giants region and you may have noticed on this uh, health bar which looks rather similar to our own health bars uh, there are these mischievous looking fire faces here. Whenever the health marker gets to one of these, you resolve this ability. Knock all defenders off the hill giant and move the hill giant clockwise one outer region. So it's sort of like uh, those giant creatures in Shadows of the Colossus that would try to shake you off every once in a while. This guy uh, would not be, I guess, thrilled with having people on the back cutting at his neck. So he would uh, shake you off and, and flee to a new region in which you'll have to follow him and climb up on top of him. And uh, that would be that. Okay, so he is going to start in the planes. So we'll set him over there. And shuffle, shuffle. Here we go. Oh, we have the harpy attacking the mountains. Unfortunately, no one's in the mountains to defend it. So we will increase the chaos by one. And additionally, all outer regions at level zero must increase to one. So that means the planes here go to one. Yikes. Okay. I, mean, I guess it's not that terrible. All right, we have the desert that's getting attacked, which means, unfortunately, the capital city is getting attacked. Yikes, and the forest is taking some as well. Technically, the forest should have taken that first. Those darned scorpions. All right, we have the mountains being attacked and the ruins being attacked, bringing us to six, six chaos. There are two chaos away from losing. This is not good, ladies and gentlemen. All right, we do, however, get our health back and we have the ability 
to try to help as much as we can. We have four action points to work with. We're going to go one, two, three. And the thing is, we could spend two to harmonize reducing this threat by one. But in order to do that, I would need to lose one health here. I sure would. I need to lose one health point, which would give us, uh, it looks like, two action points instead of one, which is pretty cool. But uh, basically, that means I have three action points remaining. Using two of them, I will reduce this down one more. And that leaves me with one remaining action point. I'm going to stay here to defend. We're going to try our best to keep the forest at zero threat. Because while it's at zero threat, we can utilize this harmonize action. Which, as you remember, our Zodiac Cloak allows us to use those all defender cards. And it allows us to um, even use uh, other defender cards. If we sacrifice health, we get two more action points. Which could reduce this down one or two ticks here and there. So... All hope is not lost entirely, but uh, it's going to be a close game. I'll say that much. All right. Okay, the ruins uh, being hit again. Just undoing what I've just finished doing over there. And the coast. Okay. All defenders, we now get four action points here. But if I take one more point of damage, I have six action points to spend. Which means I could go one, two, three. How about that, huh? Okay, I think this is the strategy. I think Randall is going to have to keep the capital city as calm as he can. He needs to play his little heart out on that little violin there and keep the people calm uh, as best he can. And, oh goodness, let's see if we can make it happen, folks. All Defenders card again. You know what I'm going to do? I'm actually just going to straight up do the same thing. One, two, three, four. And then the two action points because of the elixir of Aaron and the sacrifice. Five, six. Okay. So we now have reduced this from six down to zero. I mean, we still have the manticore coming and we still have other things going on. But we're certainly looking a little bit better off than we did before. Okay, red's turn. Yes, red is going to heal up to four. And red is eyeing that hill giant with a vengeance. Now remember, the hill giant... Uh, you have to climb onto his back. So we move over here for one action. We climb onto his back for two. And using our remaining two action points, we are going to use our Spear of Valor and strike at the neck of the Hill Giant. Bam! Three damage. One, two, three. Unfortunately, that will trigger that mischievous fire. He's going to throw us down on our bums. Bam! And then he is going to move to the next clockwise region. So we're going to have to chase him down. Indeed. And you know what? I was thinking of using my final action point to move and chase him. But I'm not going to because, remember, the planes has that safeguard ability where I can defend two adjacent regions. So I can protect the ruins from here and the mountains and the planes. So I might need to do some defending here before I decide to chase that hill giant down again. Maybe. Yes, that's what I'm going to do. Okay, I've decided. Oh, and if I wanted, uh, because this is another defender's card, I do have that cloak. I could sacrifice one more health uh, to do another uh, point of healing here. But I'm not going to do that because it's at zero. So, very good. Almost like our health. <laughs> okay, the Manticore is attacking. And he is using his raise ability, which means that instead of increasing the chaos by one, he increases it by two. Okay, partially undoing our work there. But uh, it's going to take a little more than that, my friend. All right, and then this is going up, and unfortunately, the coast is nearing its limit as well. Oh, my goodness. Okay, and then we'll shuffle. Goodness, it is relentless. You have to still keep up with all this stuff. Red Defender's turn. Okay, all right, so Red is going to use the start of her turn to, let's see. Yeah, because I can only use the spear once per turn. So I'm going to move here one, climb on the back for two, and a jab at him with that spear. One, two, three. Bam. Another uh, set of this. He's going to shake us off. He's going to throw us down to the dirt. And he's going over to the coast. That coward. And we have one point left. Action point. And we could, for example, if we wanted to, we could um, take a damage and, and use another. But I don't think we need to. I think we'll just use our remote ability to... Um, 
secure using far shot and we'll reduce that down by one. I think that's what we'll do. Okay. All righty. Moving right along. Oh, the harpy. Crap. Oh, the harpy. If I don't defend her one, she's going to increase this by one point. Maybe what I should have done was take... Nah, I don't think so. If I don't defend this, she's going to increase all these outer regions up by one, which is really going to put the forest up by one, but then that means we can't use harmonize until such a time as we fix it. But I guess that's not too bad. All right, so we're going to let her increase that by one because really we need Nira healthy enough to go and, and fight this giant. Although what I might do is, is have our friend over here uh, crawl his tiny behind up there and try to fight it as well. Okay, so that means this is going to increase to one, meaning that we'd have to decrease this before such a time as we can use that harmonize ability anymore. Okay. Oh, and of course, that manticore just adding insult to injury. Okay, it's yellow's turn. Yellow has choices. I think what yellow's going to do... Mm. Okay, yellow's going to go one, two, three. I still have one action point left. Actually... Oh, but I need to do that before using this action, don't I? Oh, man. Darn. It's unfortunate that I was not able to defend that uh, Harpy's thing, or I would have maybe potentially considered it. And for my last bit, oh, that's really unfortunate that this is his card. Maybe I'll go here. I guess that's what we'll have to do. Oh, okay. The ruins are going to get hit, unfortunately, as is the coast. There we go. All defenders. Okay, so we have four actions among our defenders. I think the first... Hmm... Oh, and you know what? I forgot as well. At the end of my turn, because I ended my turn in another region, I get to reduce this by one. Woo! Nice. Okay. Oh, man. This is tough. Oh, this is tough. I guess I'll move one, two... And stab. There we go. Now, uh, yellow's not actually on the hill giant. Uh, yellow's just in the um, the region here. Okay, so he's going to knock us off one more time. There we go. He's going to give me one more damage. And then the hill giant is migrating down to the forest. Oh, boy. So that was one, two, three, four. That was all four actions. Wow. Wow. Man, okay. All right, the desert is getting that, and the coast, unfortunately, is getting one. The mountains ugh, are increasing that by one. And the good news, however, is that this card going onto the mountains means that this ruins part will not activate. Oh, man, it's down to the wire. There are two cards left, and you know what? We do have one more All Defenders card. If the next card is an All Defenders card, we win. If it's not, we lose. This is down to the wire, folks. Believe. 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 No. No. Oh, no. No. Unfortunately, we did not win. It was not the All Defenders card, and that means that the final bit of threat goes to the capital city. Scorpion wins. I hate Scorpions. Suck. I hate them. Which ends the game. If it was the final All Defenders card, one of us would have been able to get up here, get on top of the giant, and finish the delivering blow. That was one of the closest games I have ever played here. 
And uh, wow, I mean, actually, I had a blast. <laughs> oh, that was uh, exciting. Normally, when I play this game, it goes like you have either a massive leading victory or you have a crushing defeat. It's not usually very close to when I play. So this was actually very exciting. And even though I lost by the, the smallest margin, I, I did as best I could. I think we really made it quite far with our tree strategy. I was really hoping that was enough to, uh, to pull the victory through for us. But unfortunately, uh, it was not. And there's not a darn thing that I could have done. Darn. All right. Well, uh, ladies and gentlemen, that was uh, Tiny Epic Defenders. I think I will have to come back for this game because I forgot just how much I enjoy it, actually. Uh, when I'm not explaining the rationale behind all my turns, the, the game generally actually goes pretty quickly. Um, you know, it, under uh, under an hour, usually under 40 minutes, frankly. Uh, I've never played the Dark War expansion, so I may have to check that out on a future playthrough. Essentially, it allows you to uh, fight bosses in a uh, sort of a subsequent fashion, level up, get new skills and add some more uh, artifacts as well. And of course, new enemies, new bosses, all that good stuff. But, uh, and, uh, these like special mini bosses called generals, uh, which sound pretty neat as well. Uh, I was a little intimidated by it at first because the game used to thrash me so hard. I didn't get thrashed, uh, this time around. I don't think, uh, I did my very best and it was very close, but unfortunately, uh, it was not what, uh, what we were able to accomplish. We, we did not pull out the victory against the hill giant this time around, but certainly on a future playthrough, hopefully we'll have better fortunes. Thank y'all so much for watching. Uh, my final thoughts on the game is just that I think it's a blast. Uh, it's the first tiny epic game I've played. It's my favorite to date. I mean, I haven't played tiny epic dungeons yet, but uh, this actually still holds my first and favorite spot. Um, I will say though, it's not entirely balanced necessarily. Um, that is to say some items are infinitely more useful than others. Like, I mean, you even saw here in some regard, if I didn't have the spear, I wouldn't have even come close, I don't think, to, to standing a chance to this guy. Additionally, some of these items in here are, like, way good. So, like, the Horn of Command. Spend one action. Choose a defender in the capital city and move them to an adjacent reader, uh, region. They are restored to full HP. Instead of having to wait on the turn order deck to heal, you can just do that. And I've seen strategies online where essentially people loop that, uh, you know, with the characters like the Barbarian. Uh, yeah, some of the characters as well are certainly more useful than others. The Barbarian, uh, I think, is very exploitable, um, given that basically his special ability is that he can do that action here, the sacrifice health to gain actions as many times as he wants. So if you have the Horn of Command on someone like that, he can just go around doing a bunch of stuff, then, you know, come to the, you know, come to the uh, capital city, blow the horn, he's at full, and he's ready to go again. Additionally, there's also some locations that have some uh, abilities, like here, this one, Rectify. You spend two action points, swap the top two cards of the discard pile with the top two top cards of the turn deck. If you get like two turn cards in a row, which at the early game is pretty common, I mean, you could basically just like skip the entirety of the enemy turn uh, for certain rounds and loop it over and over because this is limited to once per turn. I think what they meant is once per round, and that's how I play it. Because otherwise you can loop it pretty hard and uh, essentially just negate the enemy's ability to play on certain shuffles. Um, and there's a, a few other things here and there. And then some of the items I think are just not very helpful compared to their partners. Like this one I think is the worst. When your defender card is drawn, instead of taking your turn, you may place your card on the bottom of the turn deck. When it's drawn again, gain one additional action. It's like, I mean, I guess that's okay. But compared to stuff like... You know, the spear here giving you three damage on a boss instead of one. Uh, the ability to block and tank those dire enemies and build up your items. A free secure action. This sacrifice right here, if you spend one health, you get two actions instead of one. And you can combo it with the Zodiac Cloak. You know, so there's some items in here that are not as good as the others. And uh, unfortunately, that means sometimes in the shuffles, you get those items that are not very situationally helpful to you when you really need the other stuff. I actually got a pretty decent build here, so I'm not complaining about this particular playthrough. I think it worked out really well for this playthrough. But on other playthroughs, it can be pretty brutal. 
Uh, so to, just to say the least on it. Um, but, oh, and then some bosses. This guy, I think, is actually one of the easier bosses, frankly. So um, it's not as though I was, I was facing the harder bosses. Some of the bosses in the game can be very, very brutal. And, like, you really do need that spear. Like, the tree boss in there, for example, is very hard to actually put damage on and requires a lot of actions if you're not doing, dealing damage with the spear. So, like, against someone like that, you either need to be, like, massively lucky or you need to have the spear. And since you draw one card at a time from this 10, tar 10 card artifact deck, you may not see the spear for the game, or you may not see some of these more powerful items throughout the game uh, that you really need. So I've experimented with the idea of like doing a draw two, keep one kind of thing, so that if you draw two power cards, you have to decide which one to keep and which one to pass up on, which is a tough choice. Or if you uh, draw like a good, you know, powerful card and a weak card, you can put the weak card over into the discard pile, of course. And then, you know, if you ever, if you happen to get to the bottom of, uh, if you happen to get all the cards in the discard or in someone's possession, then you reshuffle and, you know, you continue from there. But I think that would be a quite remarkable set of circumstances, honestly, to make that happen. But uh, still, for what the game is, it's incredibly cheap. It's small. Uh, and I still have a blast with it. I still love it. Uh, even when it uh, destroys me with these uh, heart-wrenching uh, heart wrenching defeats, uh, not victories today. All right. Well, hey, thank you all so much. I really appreciate uh, you know, watching the videos. We'll be back certainly with more and maybe some uh, deeper content in the next few videos. But uh, definitely appreciate your patronage. And uh, if you want, go ahead and like, share, and subscribe. You know the drill. This is YouTube after all. Very good. Have a good one, everybody.